Hello everybody, welcome to FranchiseHelp.com. I'm Matt Wilson, I'm here with Greg George, Franchise Development at V's Barbershop. Greg, thanks for coming by. Yeah man, great, good to speak with you. Hey, no, no problem. So, I really want to dive into, you know, V's Barbershop has an interesting, interesting concept here. And basically, you're ha the old nostalgia of the barbershop where, you know, you get your clean shaven, um, you get your shoes shined, all that kind of stuff. That's all, you know, you can get that in this, this, it's almost just an old school feel of V's Barbershop. What, can you explain the concept to the, to the people at home, home who have never actually been to one? Absolutely, man. Uh, V's is, in fact, very unique and it's definitely very old school. Uh, there's a lot of concepts out there in franchising, in particular in the barbershop and beauty business. And V's is, it's a different concept and it's different because it's a barber shop. Okay. Yeah, uh, Matt, I know you're a little younger than I am, but back in the day, most guys my age, their father took them to a barber shop. Sure. They made the barber, the place had a certain smell to it. When you walked out of there, you felt good, and it was an experience. And mm -hmm. that's what beats is. It, it's 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 an experience. It's a our our tagline is it's a guy thing. And what we do at these is we cut hair. We cut men and boys' hair. There you go. We trim mustaches and beards. We give facials and facial massages. We give straight edge razor shades, which are nice sometimes. And also, we shine shoes. Now, wait a second. You said facials. Facials for a man? Yeah, facial massages for a man. Okay. Right. Okay. And so, we give facial and facial massages. We straight edge razor shades. Shine shoes, trim mustaches and beards. Our customers are men, boys, and of course, mothers of boys. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, your mom has to bring you into the barber shop, of course. So, but why wouldn't someone just go out and start their own, you know, their own barber shop? What's the, you know, why buy into the franchise model? That question is a great question, Matt. I've had several people ask me that. You know, a lot of people can probably go out and start their own barber shop. The problem is, typically, barbers are not businessmen. They're barbers. Okay. And they're not marketers. They're communicators, but they're not necessarily barbers. And uh, most of the people that contact me, they are not barbers. They're business people. So you don't have to be a barber. To buy into these. Most of our franchisees are not barbers. You okay. do not need to know how to cut hair to own and operate a V's barbershop. Okay, and then but where where do you find the barbers? Do you just put an ad in the in the newspaper, barbers needed? That's a great question, Matt. Uh, I'll give you an example. We recently opened up a store in Houston, Texas. Okay. And when we go into a region or an area, we have access to who all the barbers are in that region and area. And what we, we created a, a, a marketing piece that we send out several weeks prior to the grand opening of the bees. We send it to all the barbers. We show them what our barbership looks like. They see pictures of our you know, barbers all dressed alike. They see the plasma screen TVs in front of every barber chair. Sure. The barber chair that looks like a king should be sitting in it. Yeah. They see the authentic sports memorabilia on the walls. Let, let me stop a minute and tell you, these is different from all the others because it's authentic. You know, this isn't a cookie cutter, you know, uh, there's flags at every stall that all look alike, or it's not cheesy with uh, maybe women, you know, wearing loose clothing, mm -hmm. cutting hair. It's, it's not a fad kind of a thing. It's authentic, it's classy, but most important is the experience that the men and boys have. They know that they're going to get a great haircut, uh, a shoe shine, a shave. Uh, mothers in particular uh, like taking their sons to these because they know the quality of service. So you have the, you know, you have these big king chairs, and they, boot, you know, they boost you up. Where does the, where does the franchisee, you know, get the chairs from? The memorabilia on the walls. I mean, you know, if we put one in New York, are, are 
you know, they, they're not just going to put up any old teams. I mean, people are going to want to walk in and see the Yankees and the Giants and the Jets. Absolutely. That's another great question, Matt. And the bottom line is we've got all that figured out for our franchisees. And okay. Big, because we've gone through it. We've been in business over 11 years now. We put together a lot of locations, and we know what a pain in the rear that can be trying to worry about where do I get my cabinetry, where do I get the memorabilia, the barber chairs, the accessories. Right. It's all turnkey with these, and we don't make any money on that. It's just a service we provide. We find your real estate. We negotiate your lease. We hire a law firm to negotiate your lease. In your local area? Absolutely. We have the cabinet makers that we got uh, relationships with. We know where to bring in the barber chairs, the plasma screen TV. It's all packaged. You literally, I mean, the truth of the matter is, once you invest the money in it, uh, we work together to execute setting up the location. We have all the markets for two years. We have been cutting edge on marketing, and today we're still cutting edge. Uh, we're also um, we're out there in social media with these as well. But so, I can I can still pick my teams to go on the wall, huh? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So, what makes you guys what makes you guys different? That's what I want to know. Well, you know that's a that's a <laughs> another great question. Quite frankly, is. Uh, I'll first use the old adage, you get what you pay for. With these, there's nothing cheap about our concept, from the cabinetry to the feel when you walk into the place. I'm not saying it's over the top, it's only for rich people, but the fact of the matter is, the people who come to these are medium to higher income uh, customers. Okay. The, the bottom line is, Matt, that what sets us apart from these other places are, it's the borrower. Our business is built around our borrowers. Okay. People come to these because we only hire professional barbers. Typically, when we go into a region, we get the best barbers because they make the most money with these, and they bring their customer base with them to help get your business started. So we go out and find the best barbers, and that's what builds the business. The people want the service. The people want to be able to chat with their barber, fellow barbers, or fellow customers about sports. You know, it's sure. about the fat, it's about talking, you know, relationships, and it means you can do that. Okay, that makes sense. So, all right, so say I'm a barber, right, and I want to cut, you know, I want to start cutting people's hair and go out on my own. I could do this for, a, you know, a couple thousand dollars, get a real nice re retail location, and start trimming hair. But what is the leg up that they're getting with these fran with these franchises? I mean, barbershops are proven across the country to work. I mean, they're re they're pretty much recession proof. People always need their haircuts. But why would I, I? I still need to know why would I open up a V's barbershop as opposed to go out and, and, and do something else? You know, just go out on my own. Well, that's a, another <laughs> great question. First of all. 90% of independent businesses close, 10% of franchise businesses close. Okay. Number two, we've been doing this for over 10 years now. Number three, the average barbershop may average a hundred something to $200,000 a year in sales. And a side note, I'm not making any financial claims here, but there are uh, franchise disclosure documents, we share that we've had our stores averaged close to $600,000 a year in business. That's okay. the difference between an independent and a brand. And is that on your, your earnings disclaimer? It is. Okay. That's and that's all available on, on FranchiseHelp.com, your FTD, everything. You know, our, our FTD, Matt, is sent to the prospective franchisee once we speak with them. But the bottom line is I don't want to focus so much on what the numbers are. Sure. I want to focus on track record. I want to focus on every V's looks alike as it relates to the barber chairs, the fixtures, the cabinetry, uh, our 
brand name now that we're expanding. This business started in Arizona, where we have seven locations. Okay. Now we've expanded to California, Washington State, Texas, New Jersey, soon to be Missouri, and several other states. So now it's starting to catch on. People, you know, well, I was just speaking with our founder about this a couple days ago. You know, people, generally men, business people that are looking at franchise. I know women are, but men are the, who call us about this. Sure, you know, the nature of the business is the barbershop. Uh, they are going to a barbershop, either their wife's salon or Great Clips. And they're seeing how there might be 22 fantastic Sams in their town. Yeah. And they're seeing the business opportunity, and in some way, they stumble on the V's online, it seems. And they call us, and that's the type of people coming in an organization. They're not barbers, they're business people that don't want to be at a restaurant making sub sandwiches seven days a week to make $60,000 a year. They want to be in a business where they don't have a whole lot of employees or a whole lot of inventory. And they want to be in a business they can be proud of. And with these, you know, let's just say if you're a guy and you like to look good and you're involved in the community and you have contacts and you know how to run a business and manage four to six barbers and market your business to the community in grade school, in middle school, in high school, in college, and professionals, this is a great concept to look at. I like it, Greg. I like it. Well, hey, thank you very much for, for sharing some of this in, for sharing some of this insight. There's a lot of people out there who want to learn more about bees, more about franchising. If you have one thing that you look for in franchisees when they come to the table, what is that differentiating factor in the actual franchisee themselves that say, you know what, this person is right for bees? Well, you know, it, it's you just have to measure how they operate from the beginning when you make contact with them through the process, which by the way, you can't buy a franchise by mistake. Right. And with these, we don't, when we start talking to people on the phone, we're not in it to slam them in a franchise, man. We, it is a process. It takes several months to put a relationship together on both ends. So. We're in no hurry like all these other franchise companies. My job as director of franchising is to is not to sell a franchise, it's to provide a prospective franchisee with the information so they can do the due diligence and see if this is an opportunity they want to pursue and I enjoy doing it. And, you know, we're another company, Matt, just to elaborate, you know, we don't bombard people with phone calls and send them a whole bunch of matter of fact, we don't send any paper to our prospective franchisees. You know, when people are interested in these, I will send them a killer 14-page electronic brochure to let them check it out and see if they're interested before we go any further. Then if they are, you know, I put them together with our founder, Jim Valenzuela, myself, and we get to know them. And then the next step is we send them the information about our company. Then the next step is they fly out to Arizona and spend the day with Jim, meet with multiple franchisees, barbers, they get a haircut, they get a straight edge razor shake, they get to know us, and then we decide if we're a match. And if we do, we move forward, and then we go to the process of getting the location of it. That's so exactly right. I think it's a fantastic process, and that's exactly what we're trying to initiate at Franchise Help, is educate the franchisees so that they know what they're getting themselves into. We might not be able to give them that clean shave, but we can still guide them through the process, give them the education, and say, hey, we don't want you just to stumble into a franchise. We want you to know that this is for you, and that's why we're doing interviews like this. So, Greg, hey, I appreciate it very much. Um, you coming out from V's Barbershop. Thanks for joining us on Skype today.